Hey everybody, it uh, looks like you're getting ready for a test, so hopefully this lesson will help you get uh, get yourself ready uh, to get a good ace this test. So uh, this is module three, and don't forget all your lessons can be found at uh, mrmathblog.com. Okay, so you had something like this. So the graph uh, below represents Robert's total distance traveled during his walk to school. So write a possible situation for the graph. Okay, so so he's walking, walking, looks like he's walking fast when it gets steep and a little bit slower right here. What do you think this represents right here? This probably means that he stopped and maybe talked to some friends and then he, he started walking to school fast again right there. So so um, uh, the parts one and four are steeper than section uh, two. So so Robert was walking faster during these times. He's going fast to school. The steeper it is, the faster he's going to school right there. So he's still walking to school. He just started going slow. Maybe he saw his friends, and then maybe he stopped and talked to his friends right there. So section three is horizontal. So Robert wasn't moving during this time right here. So here's the time lapsed down here as time increases. Okay, here's the distance in meters right here. So imagine, you know, this represents right here, say, five minutes right here, and he walked this distance right here. Well, he walked a lot of distance, so he's walking kind of fast. And if this is another five minutes right here, but he only walked this distance, notice how the distance only went up a little bit more right there. So he's walking slower right there. And then right here, well, as the time is increasing going to the right, the distance is not increasing, so he's staying there. So maybe something like this. So, so Robert walked quickly at the beginning. That would be right here. Then he slowed down. That would be this guy right there. He stopped and talked to some friends right here, and then he realized he was going to get late, so he started walking fast the rest of the way to school so he wouldn't be tardy. Okay, so let's try that with this one. So a person gets a ride at an amusement park. The ride rises slowly and then quickly to its highest point. Okay, so let's do that part right there. So it rises slowly, so I don't know, whatever steepness this is, and then quickly, just make this one steeper right here, so the quicker. So here's the time right here, as time goes right here, the steeper it is, the, the higher they're going, the faster they're going right there. So here he is riding the ride slowly and then quickly right here. Okay, and then this says, then to build anticipation, the ride stops for a period of time. Well, that's going to be a, a horizontal line for a period of time right there. So there's the ride stopping for a period of time before quickly falling. Okay, so it's going to be quickly falling. Here it is, quickly falling. And then, uh, and then it descends more slowly after coming to a complete stop. So it's still going to go down, but it's going to go down a little bit more gradual right there. Okay, so there it is descending a little bit more slowly. Okay, piece of cake. All right, so here's a relation. A relation, remember, is just a set of ordered pairs. So there's a set of ordered pairs. And then we're going to give a mapping diagram. Well, I'll show you what that is. I did that, and I think it was in lesson 3.1 or 3.2. And then we're going to state the domain and range and explain whether it's a function or not. Okay, so here's the mapping diagram. So this negative 3 went to 3, so I'm going to put an arrow to that. 0 went to 6, so an arrow from 0 to 6, uh, 2 to 9, and then here's negative 3 again. Negative 3 also goes to 6 again, so it's going to go to that right there. Okay, so there it is right there. There's our mapping diagram right there. The domain is all the input values, these x values right here. It's all the first coordinates right here, and the range is all the y values right here. Okay, and this relation is not a function because the input negative 3 goes to two different outputs. To be a function, it only it can only go to one output right there, okay? And then so if you're given a graph right here, you can use the vertical line test to determine if each is a if each function is a graph. So if we did this right here, um, we just uh, slide this through and it can intersect the graph in at most one spot. You see how it only intersects that graph in at most one spot? Over here, Ding, ding, ding. There's more than one spot right there. So this one's not a function. This one is. This is a yes. This one down here, even though they're points, there's one spot right there. One spot, one spot. Yeah, this one looks like a function right here. On this guy right here, it intersects those two spots right there. This one is not. So it looks like it's going to go yes, no, yes, no right there. Okay? So that's how you use that vertical line test right there. Okay? All right, so write an equation in function notation. Graph the function, state the independent and dependent variable, and then give the domain the range. Okay, there's a lot there. Okay, so here we have a study skills tutor charges $8 an hour for sessions 
that last one, two, three, or four hours right there, okay? So write a, an equation in function notation since it's eight bucks an hour. So that, remember, function notation is f of x. It's the same as y. This is the same as y equals 8x. But since it said uh, function notation, then we say f of x or f parentheses x. So there it is, eight bucks an hour right there. Okay, let's go ahead and graph that, okay? So we're going to graph, um, uh, this is the length of the session. And so after one hour, it's going to be eight bucks. After two hours, it's going to be 16 bucks and so on. So there's the graph of that right there. Okay, and then what else does it say? And then state the independent and dependent variables. Okay, typically this is the dependent variables. The cost totally depends on how long the session was being for tutored right there. So since the cost was depending on, it's the dependent variable right there. So the dependent variable is your total cost and your independent variable is your number of hours. Okay, this is always your independent variable down here, almost always. And this is uh, almost always uh, your dependent right there, okay? All right, and then so the ordered pairs are, are 1, 8, 2, 16, 3, 24. Look, this is, uh, this is 1 times 8 is 8. 2 times 8 is 16, 3 times 8 is 24, 8 times how many hours there are right there. So the domain is all the, the 1, 2, 3, 4, and the range is all the, the 8, 16, 24, and 32 right there, okay? All right, so I think we're done with that one right there. Let's do the same with this one here. A farmer has up to three pigs at a time on his farm. The given table shows the average number of pounds of feed needed for X pigs daily. Okay, so for one pig they need 55 pounds. For two pigs, they need 110 pounds. Can you see that's that's just 55 and 55 right there? Three pigs, if we did another 55, is 165. So a function would be f of x equals 55x, where x is the number of pigs right there. Okay, let's graph these. 155. So we'd go over 1. Notice uh, each 3 is 1. So over 1, up to 55. This one's kind of hard. We've got an estimate right here. So here's 40 right here. Here's 60. So 50 would be right in here. So it's a little bit above 55. So it would be right about there. And then here's 2, 110 right there. Okay. Here's 3, 165. Nice. Uh, it doesn't say connect them because uh, we only have one, two, or three pigs right there. So we're not going to have a bunch of other ones. So we don't connect them. It's just going to be those dots right there. The independent variable is the number of pigs. The dependent variable is the pounds of feed. It, uh, the pounds of feed totally depends on how many pigs there are. Okay, so your range, I'm sorry, your domain is all the inputs or your x's and your range is all all these numbers right here. Okay, easy enough right there. All right, and then so this graph represents the function uh, f of x equals negative x squared plus 2. All right, so state uh, true or false uh, for each of these statements right here. So when x equals 1, so let's go over here. When x equals 1, you go up to the graph right there. Uh, f of x, which is y, that's how high it goes up. So this would be 1 right here. So when x equals 1, this is also 1 right here. So that one looks true. Okay, so uh, where that point is, where x equals 1, this is also at 1 also. All right, this time this says when f of x equals 2, well, this is y. So when uh, y equals 2, that's right here. x is 0 right here, not negative 2. So this one's false. Okay, so uh, at f of x equals 2, x equals 0. Okay, and so that one's false. Okay, so when x equals negative 1, so let's go back negative 1, and we go up. Okay, so what's f of x? It's right here. f of x equals 1. So that this one's true right there. Here's a trickier one right here. When f of x equals negative 2, so f of x is y. So let's go down to negative 2. Where is x? Well, look, the, the graph is right there at negative 2, but it's also right here at positive 2. So x equals plus or minus 2 when f of x equals negative 2 right there. Kind of tricky right there. Okay. All right. So let's solve a couple equations right here. 14 plus x over 2 equals 3. Well, let's get rid of this. Kids freak out with fractions, so let's get rid of it. We'll multiply everything by 2. Everything. This times 2, this times 2, this times 2. So the, we call the multiplication property. And then the 2's cancel right there. So here, 14 times 2 is 28. We're left with that x. 2 times 3x is 6x. Now we're going to 
uh, we're going to do this subtraction property and subtract x from both sides right there. We get 5x equals 28, and then the division property, uh, we get 28 fifths. And just leave it like that. You can go ahead and make it 5 and 3 fifths if you want, but improper fractions are cool as long as it's reduced, you guys. So 28 fifths equals x. All right, let's try it with this one here. Okay, here we're going to use uh, the distributive property and distribute that 2 through. All right, and then uh, there's a couple of ways you can go from here. I think I added x to both sides, this negative x right here. So here it is right there. Okay, and then uh, they cancel, and we get 2x plus x is 3x. And now I'm going to get rid of this negative 8. So we're going to go plus 8 by the addition property. Plus 8 plus 8, we get 21. Then divide by 3, we get x equals 7 right there. Okay. Hey, good luck on your test that you guys have. Let me know how you did. And if you guys can, uh, click like. And if you haven't subscribed, please do that too. Take care.